What up my MMA homies? I'm back again, to study last weekend's fight between Cody Garbrandt and Rob Font. Now, I'll just come out and say it. If there's one person that should be more embarrassed than Cody after that performance, it should be Dominic Cruz. Note I'm saying this even as Cody has once again put his foot in his mouth, and made some unfortunately prophetic statements pre-fight. What do you think about his jab and just his, his boxing in general? I'm going to be three, four steps ahead of that guy inside that octagon. And he does well with the jab, you know what I mean? But that's good. And I, I hope he uses that jab a lot. You know, that's going to be something that he's going to have to use. He's going to have to use more than a jab to, to stop me. So why am I throwing Cruz under the bus? Hasn't the man gone through enough? Yes, Font won by outstriking Cody, but Cody got outstruck by Cruz too, and yet he still managed to win a unanimous decision. Rob Font came in as a jabber with a reach advantage, looking to get the angle and pot shot. The good old stick and move. Funny. That was exactly Cruz's game plan. He too was a jabber coming in with a reach advantage, and arguably a better understanding of angles. He also was supposed to have the edge in cardio. A lot of the credit has always gone to Cody that night. For putting on the performance of his life against Cruz. Quite possibly the greatest of his career in hindsight. But in my post-fight study, I have always maintained that Cruz suffered a curiously bad lapse in fight IQ that fateful night. Let's look at Rob Font's game plan. Right from the get-go, you can see him looking to get an angle, and work his jab. All throughout the fight, he stayed disciplined with his jab on the outside, being very cautious about stepping in with his right hand. Just stay disciplined, you know, uh, stop trying to look for the finish, and just stay behind my jab. Like I said, I have the best jab in the UFC, and that's for sure. Now, this is exactly what Cody faced against Cruz. He had a choice. He could either stay on the outside and try to wait for me and let me pick up my rhythm and my feints and my timing. Right from the start, Cruz was creating angles and pestering Cody with his jab. In both fights, Cody was doing the right thing. Preemptively fleeing these approaches, and also using his slips as an added layer of defense. As you can see, Cody has seen this game with Cruz before, and early on against Font, his footwork was again on point. He was recognizing the jab's danger early, and frustrating attempts to pot shot him. Cody wasn't charging and recklessly with his trademark right overhand and left hook. Instead, he was being patient and waiting for his opening. Now, this is where the uncharacteristic break in fight IQ happens for Cruz. After seeing his attempts at making angles and jabbing fail, Cruz decided to come straight at Cody, looking to land power shots. This gave Cody a chance to plant and flurry, allowing him to bring his speed and power into play. As we all know, Cruz got dropped badly from a few of these exchanges and eventually lost a decision. In his own words, Cruz explains away abandoning his pot shot strategy, as him not wanting to give fans a boring fight. I'm there put on a show. If I would have pulled back and stopped throwing a little bit, I think the fight could have been a little bit more stagnant, but who the hell wants to watch that? Whether this loss of discipline was due to pride or sheer frustration isn't clear, but one thing is for sure, Font didn't stray from his game plan, and kept pot shotting for the full five rounds. The, you know, I can't go hook for hook with him, I can't go big overhand with him, with him. it's just going to be the jab, and, you know, I was preaching it the whole time, and, um, you know, I just stayed disciplined, I really believe in it, and, uh... Cody's cardio gave out halfway through the fight from all the defensive running and wrestling, and as he slowed down, more and more jabs started to land, and Font was able to step in freely to throw his right hand in the later rounds. Now, Font obviously had the benefit of studying the Cruz fight as well as Cody's three other losses, but full credit to his fight IQ and discipline, in using that knowledge to get a dominating win over a former UFC champion. Scouting your opponent goes a long way at this level of the sport, and besides his own offensive game plan of staying behind his jab, Rob Font was also prepared defensively for the offensive tools Cody was bringing in. In particular, Cody's right overhand and left hook. For those who don't know Cody's signature attacks, Cody isn't much of a jabber himself, and he likes to blitz you with a right overhand, followed by a left hook. This ability to catch you off guard from the outside, was the primary reason for his early success in the UFC. The other main weapon Cody has, is the ability to flurry you with quick and heavy strikes, if you try to stand in front of him to exchange. Cody's come up short with this exchanging tactic lately, but right before this font fight, he showed how dangerous he can be if you engage him in a shootout. Now. Look at some of Font's reactions whenever he suspected Cody was about to explode out of his defensive stance. Every time he sensed Cody was about to switch into offensive mode, he would immediately guard up and signal he was ready to block the left hook. This acknowledgement alone was enough to stop Cody from even trying and risk wasting precious energy. Font also didn't engage when Cody stopped moving and started to assume a crouch, inviting him into attack. Instead Rob Font would back off and stay at range, and persist in only using his jab. 
Cody's quick hooks have now become predictable in the division, and most are aware of the danger of getting blindsided in the pocket. When Font did get into range of Cody's hooks, he was constantly aware of the danger and took precautions. Having his guard up constantly was one countermeasure he took, but his other defensive precautions were more sublime and worthy of study. Whenever Font was in the pocket and was using his slipping as a defense, he wasn't just mindlessly going through the motions, he was constantly aware of the danger of rolling right up into a counter hook. Here you can see, as Font slips Cody's right, he quickly looks up to check if Cody is going to throw his left hook, before rolling up to recover. Always aware of the danger of rolling up right into Cody's counter left. Font would even delay coming up from his first slip, till he was safely out of the pocket. This was excellent defensive awareness of his opponent's most dangerous weapon, and it was only last week that we saw what happens, when you casually return your head to the centerline, oblivious to your opponent's counter left hook. Font's control of Cody's body using his lead hand was also masterful. Not only was he using his extended jab hand to block overhands, he was also using it to go for collar ties. Here you can see Rob's lead hand has gotten a single collar tie, to stop Cody from coming up with a follow-up left hook. He then quickly closes the distance and gets double collar ties, from which he then pulls Cody in for a knee. Font's use of collar ties was creating double jeopardy for Cody in the pocket, where he is typically most dangerous. First, he was getting blocked from coming up with his left hook, and if he failed to defend double collar ties, he would be eating knees. Once he had thrown his right, Cody was forced to think about defense and evasion, rather than using his signature left hook. Even when Font couldn't get double collar ties, he had a plan if he could only get one. Here you can see, he uses his single collar tie to again control Cody's posture, but this time Font pulls Cody in for an uppercut. Font's lead hand work was excellent, not just for jabbing, blocking overhands and getting collar ties. But also as a defensive post to check Cody from suddenly exploding forward. Numerous times, he would leave his lead hand out as a preemptive post, to check any sudden advances from Cody. Watch this other study on this tactic if you are interested to know more. Another nice detail about Font's guard was this. Font was using this guard structure to protect him from Cody's blitzes. Here you can see, Font has his chin behind his shoulder to protect against the right overhand. And for the left hook, he has his guard up protecting his head, and his lead hand jamming Cody's left shoulder, making rotating in to throw the hook difficult. Now, using a defensive post like this is not foolproof. Cody was doing the right thing and ducking under Font's hand extension to go for takedowns. He was successful several times and took Font down beautifully. However, he was unable to effectively control Font on the ground to do any significant ground and pound. Nor were his mat returns good enough to stop Font from getting back to his feet every time. Cody's inability to lean more into his wrestling pedigree here was surprising, especially since he himself was saying pre-fight that takedowns alone are insufficient. You gotta do something with the takedowns, you know, you gotta do more uh, then just taking him down. You got to do some ground and pound, you know, you know, ride him out for a couple minutes in there, get him real tired, get him exhausted. These failed attempts to out-wrestle Font drained Cody's cardio by the third round. And the reason Cody wasn't finished was probably his sheer force of will and Font's discipline in not aggressively pursuing a finish. One more thing. With all that ducking Font was doing, you are probably wondering why Cody didn't start throwing uppercuts and body shots. Cody's corner actually advised him to do that four times. One, two, that cross is coming. Look for the counter. Look for the counter. He's starting to dip yes. a lot. So do yes. the counters low to the body first. I you know what I'm saying? He's throwing and dipping. So start countering here instead of countering to the head. Okay. You gotta start countering to the body. He's throwing and dipping. And you keep countering to his head missing. You understand what I'm saying? Counter to the body or counter uppercut. Listen to me. And counter. Counter to the body. Counter body head inside. You understand what I'm saying? He Cut. throws and then he dips. You follow me? Cody however ignored his corner's advice and kept throwing his left hook. Ironically Font was the one throwing uppercuts and body shots, trying to catch Cody on his level changes. I hate to rub salt in his wounds, but here's another soundbite by Cody that didn't age well. You know, Mark Henry and my coaches, Chris Holdsworth, Danny Castillo, Michael Mallott, are just top of the game. And, um, you know, I'm just their soldier that I got ready for, and they're giving me the commands in the corner, and, you know, I got the gun loaded. Anyways, Font's excellent performance succeeded in making Cody and Cruz look bad in one fight. But one can't help but feel Cody contributed to his own downfall, from ignoring his corner, to being unable to control Font on the ground despite taking him down multiple times. It's hard to see where Cody goes from here, though I personally would like to see a rematch with Cruz. That's unlikely to ever happen, just like I'll never see that Askarin rematch with Masvidal. One can always dream though. Anyways, that's it for this video. Do let me know your thoughts on the fight in the comments below and what you would like me to study next. 
Finally, if you would like to support these videos, do check out my Patreon and sponsors. Till next time. What would you trade? Would you trade a good jab or would you tra train a laser right hand on the fastest guy in the UFC? What would you trade? Taking the, I'm taking the fastest guy with a mean ass right hand over a jab each day. So that's fine if he wants to, you know, say that his tool is going to be a jab because I got answers for that. You know, I'll shut that down.